Today I will present our work on a perception-aware, flatness-based model predictive control for fast vision-based flight. My name is Melissa Hoer from the University of Toronto, and the work presented in this video was conducted with Professor Tim Barford and Professor Angela Schulig. So to start, it is useful to take a step back and look at the standard control loop. In the standard control loop, there is a separation of estimation and control. The objective of the controller is to compute a vehicle control command to fly some planned path with some desired speed based on the provided state. How does a common vision localization pipeline work? Visual localization requires a map of visual landmarks, which is stored as the location of images along a path. Each image in the map contains potentially thousands of visual features. For example, one common type of visual feature is known as a surf feature. Each of these visual features is associated with a 3D landmark in the scene. The visual localization pipeline starts by matching visual features in the current image with those at the closest image in the map. These raw feature matches are passed through RANSAC, which rejects some of the erroneous initial matches. The 3D landmarks associated with the remaining successfully matched visual features are called localization inliers. Based on the motion of these localization inliers in the scene, an optimization is performed to estimate the relative transformation between our current position and the closest one in the map. This is used to compute the position used in the state estimate of the controller. The visual localization pipeline relies on producing a sufficient number of localization inliers. If the number of localization inliers drops below some threshold, a localization failure occurs as a poor estimate of the relative transformation will be obtained. So the question remains, when would we not achieve a sufficient number of localization inliers? Well, there are many reasons, but three common ones include, we are currently too far away from landmarks seen in the map. We are currently viewing map landmarks from a different angle, and so their associated visual features cannot be matched well. Or there is a significant lighting change. What is the effect of visual localization failure? While we treat estimation and control separately, there is still a coupling between vision and control. In fact, this coupling between vision and control actually results in a positive feedback loop, where a poor estimate from vision can cause the controller to compute a control command that moves the vehicle further away which in turn can result in fewer localization inliers and consequently another poor state estimate, etc. So what limits the standard control loop when flying in real world environments? The key word is environment. To be more specific, real world environments can often be GPS denied. And so relying on vision as a primary mode of navigation limits knowledge of the environment to observed scenes stored in the visual map. Real world environments are only partially known to those visual scenes that are stored in the map. In our standard control loop, the controller neglects the effect of the visual environment and pipeline. As I've mentioned, there is a coupling between vision and control. So let's take a look at a video that illustrates what can happen when the controller neglects the visual pipeline. The green circles illustrate the localization in layers. If there are no circles, we have lost localization and the vehicle is lost. This is precisely what happens 
because the controller plans a path agnostic to the effect on the localization capabilities of the system. So how do we better model this coupling between control and visual perception? And how do we use this model to design a perception-aware controller? To do this, we further frame the problem. In this work, we have three key objectives. We work within a visual teach and repeat framework. The teach path creates a map of visual landmarks along a path. It is stored as a set of vertices and edges, which include all the landmarks seen at each vertex. Our aim is to repeat this taught path autonomously by matching current observed landmarks to those from teach. Our successfully matched landmarks are our localization in lines. Our second objective is to repeat this path with some desired speed while achieving our third objective, which is to guarantee localization by ensuring that we always obtain a minimum number of localization inlines. There are two main gaps. The first is, practically, we require a perception model that doesn't have to be retrained for every new path in an environment by deviating until failure. And from a control integration perspective, this model needs to be simple enough that it can be integrated into a real-time control framework that can account for its effect on localization. To this effect, our methodology has three key components. We develop a simple geometric perception model that models the probability that a landmark is successfully matched and selected as an inline. We use a perception chance constraint to ensure that a minimum number of localization inliers is guaranteed. We develop a perception-aware model predictive control, or MPC, by converting this perception chance constraint into a deterministic constraint on the position of our UAV. In this work, we present a novel, simple geometric perception model that allows us to integrate a perception constraint into a real-time model predictive control. We show how our approach reliably and optimally self-regulates speed compared to perception agnostic approaches. Our geometric perception model considers two critical angles. The parallax angle is the angle between the rays from the landmark to the teach and current repeat camera frames. It captures the perspective change as a result of path error between teach and repeat. The view angle is the angle between the current camera optical axis and the landmark. It captures the field of view of the camera and is a function of path error and gimbal rotation. On two different data sets, amounting to over 12 kilometers of flight, for each landmark from TEACH, we compute the associated parallax and view angles during repeat and mark whether it was successfully matched as a localization inline. Based on this, we plot the normalized frequency of a landmark being selected as a localization inline. Interestingly, notice that based on this data from our vision system, we have never successfully matched a landmark with a parallax angle of more than 15 degrees or a view angle of more than 45 degrees. We find a best fit model on the combined data set, which we use to associate a landmark based on the parallax and view angles with the probability of becoming a localization inline. We call this a geometric perception model. To develop a perception chance constraint, we would like the chance of localization failure to be very small. Or, in other words, we want the probability that our total number of inliers L is below some threshold to be very small. To rewrite this chance constraint as a nonlinear deterministic constraint on the position of our UAV, 
we make two assumptions. In the theory of probability and statistics, a Bernoulli trial is a random experiment with exactly two possible outcomes, success and failure, in which we have some probability of success. We assume that each landmark is a random, independent Bernoulli trial with the probability of being an inlier or a success is based on our geometric perception model. then the expected number of inliers is simply the sum of these probabilities, where PI is the probability that landmark I is a localization inlier, and N is the total number of landmarks at our closest vertex in the teach. In general, in our system, this is on the order of 500 landmarks. The variance is also given by the sum of the variances for each independent Bernoulli trial, which can be written in this way. We use Lyapunov central limit theorem as motivation to approximate the resulting distribution by a normal distribution with mean and variance given by the expressions above. Using the fact that our mean is an upper bound for the variance in this case, we can rewrite the chance constraint as a nonlinear constraint on the position of our UAV, where C bar is a constant based on the parameter delta. To design our perception aware MPC, we augment a standard model projective or MPC problem with our perception constraint. In other words, we try to compute a sequence of control inputs V that optimize a trajectory objective. In our case, we try to track a reference with some desired speed. This is subject to a vehicle model. Here we exploit the differential flatness of our UAV. While adhering to this additional perception constraint, which we have converted to a nonlinear constraint on the position of our UAV. To implement this, we require the landmark locations and gimbal orientation as inputs to our controller. To test our controller, we start by physically flying the same U-shaped teach path with the camera pitched at 50 degrees downwards, but facing in opposite directions. In case one, the camera is pointed towards the trees. In case two, the camera is facing towards the road. For both cases, we store all visual landmarks observed and then simulate the optimal path flown with a desired speed of 10 meters per second and a model predictive control with no path error constraints, fixed path error constraints of between one and six meters, and our perception aware constraint. In the first plot, we show a box plot of the predicted inlier bound on the y axis for the simulated path under model predictive control for each of the path constraint scenarios on the x axis. Our minimum inlier threshold is pre selected to be 30. If at any point along the simulated paths, the predicted inliers is below this threshold, localization cannot be guaranteed. This is the shaded red region. In the second plot, we show a similar box plot for the speed on the y-axis for the simulated path under model predictive control for each of the path constraint scenarios on the x-axis. Our desired speed is 10 meters per second. Therefore, in pursuit of fast flight, we would like our speed profile to be as close to this as possible. The line in the middle of the box plot gives the median and the white dot gives the mean for each path constraint scenario. For case one, when we are looking towards the trees, we show that under our perception aware constraint, we explicitly guarantee localization. And unlike perception agnostic approaches, we do not need to fly under different fixed path error constraints in order to find a constraint that ensures localizability. 
Moreover, we achieve a slightly faster flight over the three meter fixed path error constraint. As in case one, we show similar box plots for the second case. For case two, when we are looking toward the road, we actually achieve a high average speed over both four or five meter fixed path error constraints, even though in these cases, we cannot guarantee localization. This brings us to a key takeaway. By pointing the camera in different directions, our perception aware approach doesn't repeat the path in the same way. In these plots, we show the teach path in red, the simulated optimal path under model predictive control with a four meter fixed path error constraint in green, a three meter fixed path error constraint in blue, and our perception aware constraint in black. In looking toward the road or case two, we can actually afford a larger path error around corner one in order to prioritize speed while still guaranteeing localization. So to summarize, building perception awareness as we have in the presented work allows us to exploit the fact that a different visual results in a different optimal fast flight.